Six year. I can't believe it's been six years since I made the switch to Micro Four Thirds. Hi, my name is Jimmy Chang, a professional photographer and filmmaker based in London. You've seen the title and you're watching probably because you're either an existing Michael Forster shooter or someone who is curious about this Michael platform. And this video is made to share my experience and knowledge about this platform over the past six years and why I think it's more relevant than ever before in this increasingly complicated digital world. One of my New Year's resolutions for this channel is to talk less about gear and more photography. And well, I still do reviews and I'm not stopping there. But this video isn't just about gear. But I hope that you can see even this Michael Forthworth's platform, considered to be one of the worst in the world when it comes to consumers' perception, is as capable as anything, if you know your photography. And remember, camera is only a tool. And in no circumstance that my intention in this video is to offend any photographers or to trash talk other systems and brands. Like I said, I'm a professional photographer, which means that I make a living from taking photos. So I use my cameras a lot. And therefore, even the slightest thing can affect my decision when it comes to buying a new camera. Choosing a platform or a camera could be like marrying someone. And technically, no one is perfect, but you just got to find the perfect one for you as a photographer. And unlike a marriage though, it is a little easier when I have to divorce a system if it doesn't provide what I need for my jobs. As soon as you understand that, it makes things a little easier. However, there are a lot of implications when I switch, which I'll explain later in this video. One of Michael Forther's strengths is portability. But to demonstrate my point, I will have to go a little further back in time. The time just when I got serious with photography. And some may already know that I'm not always an Olympus guy. I started with Canon SLR in 1995. Yeah, the analog type. <laughs> and I continued to train with that system until I turned semi-pro when I bought my first full-frame DSLR, the EOS 5D, in 2005. My early years were all about travel and landscape, though I wasn't very good at the latter. The Canon 5D was my only camera together with a couple of pro lenses, the 24-70 and the 70-200 2.8, and it would be with me wherever I went. What I did not expect was that my travel photography became known amongst travel blogs and websites. To cut the long story short, my photos were so popular that the editor from Business Insider US called me. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. And my photos were subsequently published soon after. And that was not the end though, because many more travel publications follow, including Canon and weirdly, Nikon and Leica magazines follow suit. And they were published months later. Even my friends who never knew I took photos started to take notice of what I did. And eventually, well, you kind of guessed it, asked me if I wanted to photograph their weddings. And that was the turning point, And I realized that I may be good enough to pursue a career in photography. So that's how I started my professional photography as a part-time wedding photographer. But little I knew, my business grew. And a few years later, I was busy enough to give up my nine to five as a management consultant. Yeah, I, I know. And turned full time in 2008 with the upgraded Canon EOS 5D Mark II. And things were going great until summer 2011. And I was shooting weddings and other jobs almost daily. And I was absolutely drained at the end of every single day. And then I started to have thoughts about getting a lighter system. My journey to Michael Four Thirds began in 2012. I picked up an Olympus OMD EM5, the original Mark I, and I must admit that it was the look of the camera that caught my attention first. But when I picked it up, I was astonished by the size and weight of the system. And well, you probably guessed it, the EM5 became my daily personal camera. And all I can tell you is that it's hard to go back to my Canon 5D after a day of shooting with the EM5. Yeah, and I started to have a taste or became addicted to a lightweight system. A lightweight system is liberating. And I felt so much alive at the end of the day walking in the city. And I was enjoying taking photos again. And even with my Prospect EM1 Mark III, yeah, it felt good too. And after an intense summer period, I was never exhausted like I was with my Canon or even the Leica. Anyhow, my first downsizing option wasn't Olympus or Michael Four Thirds. I went with Leica. 
<laughs> yep, I know many would say Leica is a rich man's toy and not for pros, but far from it. I still know many journalists in the UK today who use digital Leica M for work. And I personally also achieved many brilliant photos from this old school rangefinder camera. And I did that because it was logical too. And I really shoot with Leica M2 and M6 film cameras and also have a few lenses in my cabinet. So it's a matter of digitizing my workflow with the M system. For the next two and a half years, I shot with my digital Leica M exclusively for everything. And I managed to clock over 60,000 frames during that time. While shooting with a manual rangefinder was kind of refreshing for my photography, for my DSLR, I encountered reliability issue with it. But I lived with the problems and it was the right system for me, mainly portability and image quality. But due to its poor reliability, I kept my Canon as backup and I still had to carry it with me with some lenses, <laughs> just not on my shoulder. I can't speak for every photographer on planet Earth as we all value things differently. But for me, the biggest selling point of Olympus and Michael Four Thirds, at least to me, is reliability, ruggedness, size, and cost. And these are in priority order. But the main reason I wanted to move away from Canon and Leica was reliability. I might have downsides with my Leica, but carrying two separate systems just wasn't right. And I may be lucky, but over the past six years, none of my Olympus cameras failed, not even once. Same can't be said with my Leica and even my Canon at the time. And I know last time I held a Canon was some years ago, but I was using that pro camera and it failed many times when I needed it most in adverse weather condition. And one time I remember when I was photographing in China, I encountered torrential rain and within 10 minutes, my Canon's back screen went and a few more minutes later, some of my buttons stopped responding. And it was fortunate that I could still take photos as the main dials that control the shutter speed and aperture still functioned. But it was scary as I didn't have my spare camera with me at the time. As a pro, the last thing you want is to lose your work or the inability to work due to equipment failure. So this is why pro wouldn't mind paying more to get more rugged body. And I will come to the cost later, but I was pretty happy to learn that a pro spec Olympus was half the price of a pro spec Canon. And same way with the lenses. So I, uh, more precisely, my wallet was very happy about it too. <laughs> anyway, I would like to say that my experience with Olympus has been great. And from what I learned from my Panasonic friends, their Michael Forsyth cameras were equally reliable. And can this be platform specific or perhaps a myth? The combination of size and reliability really changed my game. And what I'm about to say isn't something new or Michael Forsyth specific. Any photographer with a camera, regardless of brand or system, can do it. But the difference, at least to me, is that I'm more free and feel less restrictive when it comes to shooting in the field. I'm not a studio photographer. If I am, I would probably use another system. But I go out, I travel, I climb, claw, and even jump. Uh, well, kind of less these days with my aging bones and legs, but you get the idea. I may not be a Nat Geo photographer who ventures to Antarctica or the Amazon, but I do shoot in the rain in freezing temperature and the opposite as well, humid and tropical heat. Also, we're in digital age now. Cameras are getting clever and some features definitely help us. Photographers get their shots quicker and better. But one of the best things about Micro Four Thirds or more specifically Olympus is the image stabilization. Well, the days when I rely solely on the lens IS is long gone. Olympus has the world's best IBIS and it continues to show me just how effective it is. And every now and then when I hold a film SLR or even my Leica rangefinder, I find it quite hard to adjust my eyes to seeing shaky projection through the viewfinder. Well, it may be just my age, but I can never go back to non-stabilized cameras now, at least for work. Then there's computational photography. I'm never a Photoshop guy and I take what I see. But some texts are there to make things simpler, less of a guesswork. Olympus Live Composite and Live Bolt, for instance, were just amazing. It makes uh, light trails or long exposure work a breeze, but it also opens up a whole load of creative opportunities that were previously possible only to the experts. Small size also helps me get away with unnecessary trouble, especially in today's wary society. So a tool that survives hostile condition won't get me arrested and won't kill my neck and back 
and makes my photography life easier would be considered the perfect tool for me. Wouldn't you? I know what you're going to say. Michael Forther is just not good enough in 2022. But is it? I'm working with my system and still delivering works to my paid clients. With my Olympus system, that's technically using a six years old sensor technology. In essence, image quality is important. It is one of the defining factors of choosing a camera. But as a photographer, you need to balance everything and figure out what's best for your type of photography. Of course, if you're a tech nerd and want the absolute best image quality, then you should look at medium format and even large format film cameras. And like I said, any camera will get you very good results today. You've seen quite a few of my photos in this channel lately. And if you think they're bad, well, then I really have nothing to say. But I personally don't think any of them was. And in fact, I think they are great. I photograph families of celebrities. And of course, I can't really show them here due to privacy. But they're all my long-term clients and they love my photos. Never a complaint about quality. They would print them, frame them in the house. And if this isn't the proof of quality of OM system, then perhaps I should just give up photography. I've said it in my used camera video that anything from 2015 is more than capable of producing stunning images. And the advancement or for the past six years were very minimal, at least in a practical sense. Yes, new techs are better and perhaps it will help some of the photographers, but for the bulk of us working in the field, would not see the difference in use and delivery. Plus the fact that now we're embracing new AI softwares that remove any micro forthers deficiencies and make files that compare well to larger formats. Noise, resolution, sharpness, and details are no longer the laughing stick in camera clubs. And of course, to me, they weren't any issues to start with, but now they are just better. In the end, choosing a camera with image quality that satisfies you as a photographer is important. For my work, as long as I can capture the essence of my subject or whatever I'm capturing, then it makes no difference if one has 50 megapixel or one with just 12 or one with 16 stop of dynamic range or one just with 12, as long as I can capture what I need because extra won't give me, well, extra in my photography. As a professional, my clients hire me for my vision and they love and pay for the images I took. I was never questioned about resolution or the type of camera I use. And this is photography. It's all about your vision, your creativity, and the way you capture the images. How about accessories? Things like upgraded speed lights. And this may be a niche for modern photographers as most don't even use flash anymore. But while LED may become the go-to solution for artificial lightings, Speed lights are still way more portable and more powerful, especially for location portrait shoots and events. Finally, as now I also make films from OM system cameras, I want to see more collaboration with third-party gimbal and cage companies. At present, compatibility isn't the greatest and even hard to find in some cases. It would be good to see OM system be a talking point amongst filmmakers as well. Overall, I don't think my switch from full frame to Olympus has compromised anything I do professionally. And if it's okay for my professional work, it's okay for my personal work too. And that said, I don't have any regrets whatsoever. In fact, it is very refreshing, liberating, and some of the texts that come with OM system cameras allow me to be more creative. And yet, I must stress that this is purely my opinion on Michael Four Thirds and OM system. It is also very subjective based on my photography. And I respect everyone is different and your requirements can vary significantly. So like I always say, the best thing to do for any potential camera buyer, new or experienced, is to try the camera yourself because what works for me may not work so well for you. And any camera is good these days, but pick the one that makes you want to go out and shoot more. And that is your camera. What I want to say is that what satisfies me and my photography may not satisfy you. And what my system can do, you may find that you can also do just as well with other systems. But what OM system does to me is, well, it definitely satisfies me on every level, creativity, technically, and professionally. And that's it folks. What's your thoughts on Michael Four Thirds if you're already using one? And if you don't, would you like to try one? Let's have a chat in the comment section below. 
And you know what to do now. Thumb me if you like this video and sub if you want to stay in touch with all things photography, filmmaking, and of course, OM system. Peace.